You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. Biden's budget earmarks 13 billion bucks for cybersecurity. The DOJ targets AI abuse. A U.S. trade mission to the Philippines includes cyber training. CISA and OMB release a secure software attestation form. CyberArk explores AI worms. Russia arrests a South Korean on cyber espionage charges. French government agencies are hit with DDoS attacks. Jessica Brandt is named director of the Foreign Malign Influence Center. Our afternoon cyber tea host, Ann Johnson, speaks with her guest, Karen Alizari, about the hacker mindset. And Google builds itself the Bermuda Triangle of broadband. It's Tuesday, March 12th, 2024. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is your CyberWire Intel Briefing. Hello there, and thank you for joining us here today. We are glad to have you with us. The Biden administration's latest budget proposal, with a discretionary spending total of $1.67 trillion, earmarks $13 billion for U.S. federal civilian cybersecurity in the upcoming fiscal year, a modest increase of about $1 billion from the current year's budget. Military cybersecurity is set to receive $7.4 billion, contributing to the Department of Defense's overall $14.5 billion for cyber-related activities, marking a rise from this year's $13.5 billion request. The budget also allocates $800 million to assist low-resource hospitals in enhancing their cybersecurity and $500 million for a program promoting advanced cybersecurity investments. The Department of Treasury will get a $150 million boost to secure its systems against sophisticated threats, reflecting the critical role of its IT systems in managing trillions of dollars. However, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency might see a slight decrease in its cybersecurity budget to $1.24 billion from the current estimate of $1.3 billion, despite a total proposed budget of $2.5 billion for the agency, This proposal comes amidst ongoing appropriations challenges and partisan debates over CISA's role and budget, potentially affecting its ability to initiate new programs, particularly those aimed at implementing zero-trust architecture in response to a 2021 executive order. The budget highlights incremental increases in cybersecurity funding amid broader concerns over federal spending and cybersecurity efficacy. The Justice Department is increasing its focus on artificial intelligence misuse, particularly in white-collar crimes such as price-fixing fraud and market manipulation, with Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco emphasizing harsher sentences for deliberate misuse. Companies will be evaluated on their AI risk management within their compliance programs, reflecting the department's concern over AI's potential exploitation by both corporate criminals and foreign adversaries. This stance was highlighted following charges against a former Google engineer for stealing AI trade secrets, underscoring the dual nature of AI as both a promising and perilous technology. Monaco's comments aim to alert businesses to their legal responsibilities in mitigating AI risks, with federal prosecutors poised to seek stiffer sentences for AI-related misconduct. 
Microsoft plans to train 100,000 Philippine women in AI and cybersecurity through an online platform, teaching them to utilize Microsoft's AI tools for workplace skills and threat recognition. Additionally, Microsoft will introduce an AI-powered reading tool for 27 million Philippine students, aiming to improve literacy rates highlighted by a World Bank study showing significant reading struggles among students. The initiative, announced during a U.S. trade mission led by Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, includes partnerships with the Philippine government and educational institutions to enhance economic advancement and cybersecurity while addressing disinformation issues in the Philippines. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency and the Office of Management and Budget have introduced a secure software development attestation form to ensure software producers comply with secure development practices before their products are used by federal agencies. This initiative, stemming from Executive Order 14028, aims to fortify the software supply chain security as outlined by the NIST Secure Software Development Framework. Software producers must now self-attest that their software, developed in line with specific practices, is secure. The attestation, requiring a signature from a company's CEO or an authorized designee, plays a pivotal role in leveraging secure development techniques. Additionally, third-party assessments by FedRAMP-certified organizations can substitute for self-attestation. This move, part of the Biden-Harris administration's broader cybersecurity strategy, seeks to enhance the digital ecosystem's stewardship and promote software that is inherently secure, impacting not just federal government security, but also global software practices. Research from CyberArk notes how the rapid advancement of generative AI systems like OpenAI's ChatGPT and Google's Gemini has introduced new cybersecurity risks, notably the emergence of AI worms, such as Worm GPT. These worms can autonomously replicate, steal data, and deploy malware, representing a significant threat to cybersecurity. Recent research has demonstrated their capabilities through experiments like Morris 2, an AI worm designed to exploit vulnerabilities in interconnected AI systems for prompt injection attacks. To counter these threats, it's crucial for individuals and organizations to remain vigilant and implement proactive cybersecurity measures. CyberArk's study underscores the need for continuous innovation in cybersecurity defenses and the importance of secure AI system design, human oversight, and active monitoring to mitigate risks. This emerging threat landscape necessitates a collaborative effort to ensure the security of our digital ecosystem in the face of sophisticated AI-driven attacks. Russia has arrested a South Korean citizen, Baek Won Soon, on cyber espionage charges, marking the first such detention of a South Korean national by Russia. Initially detained in Vladivostok, Won Soon has been transferred to Moscow for further investigation and is currently held at a pretrial detention center. He's accused of transmitting classified top-secret information to foreign intelligence agencies. This incident occurs amidst growing geopolitical tensions in the region. This case also follows the U.S. arrest of a former Google engineer for allegedly stealing proprietary information and working covertly for China-based companies. Multiple French government agencies were hit by intense cyber attacks since Sunday night, according to the Prime Minister's office. Though the specifics of the attacks were not disclosed, they are believed to involve distributed denial-of-service attacks using familiar but notably intense technical methods. Despite the unprecedented scale of these offenses, the French government has managed to mitigate their impact, with most services restored and state websites accessible again. A crisis cell has been activated to implement countermeasures, including filtering measures by the information security agency ANSI. While the attacks have not been officially attributed to any group, pro-Russia group No Name claimed responsibility for targeting French authorities and the state-owned electricity company EDF amid ongoing tensions over France's support to Ukraine. 
Ahead of the 2024 presidential election, the U.S. intelligence community has enhanced its election security team, appointing Jessica Brandt as the first official director of the Foreign Malign Influence Center. Established in 2021, this center within the Office of the Director of National Intelligence focuses on combating foreign interference in U.S. elections. With Brandt's extensive experience in foreign influence, information operations, and digital authoritarianism, her appointment aims to bolster federal efforts against election interference, which has been a significant concern following attempts during the last two presidential campaigns. Officials have highlighted the persistent threat of foreign influence campaigns, notably from China and Russia, and the evolving challenges posed by technological advances like generative AI. The intelligence community, including Brandt's team, is actively briefing various stakeholders to prepare for potential interference in the upcoming election with a focus on monitoring and quickly attributing influence and interference operations. Coming up after the break, afternoon cyber tea host Ann Johnson speaks with her guest, Karen Elizari, about the hacker mindset. Stay with us. In the complex world of enterprise identity, securing legacy web apps at scale can be daunting. Strata Identity makes it simple. With Strata, you can effortlessly integrate non-standard apps with any identity service, like MFA or SSO, with zero coding and zero hassle. Designed by identity architects for identity architects, Strata works with every vendor, standard, and app architecture. This means your apps can now speak modern protocols and integrate seamlessly with your chosen identity services. From securing on-prem web apps to migrating away from outdated identity providers or consolidating them, Strata helps you keep your complex access policies as you modernize your identity infrastructure and get rid of technical debt. Join leading organizations like 3M, Dallas County, and CIBC in securing your apps with Strata. Visit strata.io slash cyberwire, share your identity security priorities, and receive a complimentary pair of AirPods Pro. Offer valid for organizations with over 5,000 employees. Connect today at strata.io slash cyberwire. Everybody, want to take a few minutes here and talk about our sponsor, Splunk. You know, you need to keep operations humming around the clock, but potential disruptions are everywhere. Splunk helps you predict problems and find and fix issues fast so you can reduce risk and ditch downtime. The world's largest enterprises rely on Splunk's unified security and observability platform to become more efficient, resilient, and innovative. With Splunk, you can react quickly, evolve faster, and be ready for anything. Stay ahead of disruptions. Learn more at splunk.com slash resilience. Ann Johnson from Microsoft is host of the Afternoon Cyber Tea Podcast right here on the CyberWire Podcast Network. In our most recent episode, she spoke with Karen Elizari about the hacker mindset. Here's their conversation. Today, I am joined by Karen Elizari, known online as K3, R3, N3, also known as the friendly hacker. Karen is an international recognized security analyst, researcher, author, and speaker, working with leading security firms, government organizations, and Fortune 500 companies. Karen is also a famed TED conference speaker. Her TED Talk about hackers has been viewed by millions, translated to 30 languages, and is one of the most watched talks on TED.com on the topic of cybersecurity. Welcome to Afternoon Cyber Tea, Karen. Thank you for having me, Anne. Excited to be on the show. 
So I want you to talk a little bit more about this hacker mindset, why it's important to understand the mindset, why it's important to understand it from a constructive and positive point of view, and what way can the hacker mindset help digital defenders protect data and systems? Absolutely. So this is a big part of what I believe in. It's my passion to show the world that we can learn a lot from hackers and the hacker mindset. And there are many friendly hackers. There are ethical hackers. There are hackers who work for uh, governments and corporates, and they're trying to stop the bad guys. And yet the term hacker is so often synonymous with a bad guy, a criminal, a fraudster, someone who's malicious. The original hackers, the first hackers, maybe in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s of the previous century, they were the people who were clever. They were the people who were hacking around on model train and model rail systems in MIT and other campuses in the United States. If it wasn't for those people learning and developing the basic tenets of IP and other internet protocols that we all use, we probably wouldn't have had an internet that looked like the internet that we have today that is global, that is decentralized. So a lot of that hacker mindset, I think, stems or goes back to those ideals. And for me, it's about curiosity. It's about sharing the fruits of your knowledge, sharing your skill set. You know, there are more than a million friendly hackers today on planet Earth that participate in bug bounty programs, in vulnerability disclosure programs that use their time and their talents to identify bugs and vulnerabilities and report them. And of course, I know Microsoft was one of the first big enterprise corporate and software companies that had such a program in place in the first place. But so now, you know, it's a thing that all the big Silicon Valley companies do, but also maybe um, airlines and banks and Starbucks and, you know, so many big brands have learned that these friendly hackers out there can contribute with their knowledge. Now, and arguably, so many of these big household brands can and often do hire fantastic security experts. I know that you do. And yet the external point of view, the outsider point of view, finds things that even the best in-house security talent can miss. Maybe it's because of an organizational blind spot. Maybe it's because of a specific corporate mindset. The results speak for themselves. Each year we see that individual, independent, outside hackers can identify problems in applications, in configurations, in networks, in all aspects of our technology world without being on the inside. So I kind of feel vindicated with that. You know, it kind of, I kind of feel like it proves my point that I try to make with hackers being the immune system. Be sure to check out the Afternoon Cyber Tea Podcast wherever you get your podcast episodes. With over 8,000 threat hunters analyzing over 65 trillion signals daily, Microsoft works tirelessly with the federal government to keep our nation's data secure. This 30-plus year partnership is driving mission innovation that is secure by design. Whether optimizing your existing defenses or tackling advanced threats with AI, Microsoft gives you the intelligence and the automation you need to defend at mission scale. Let's work together to stay ahead of emerging threats and secure your mission anywhere. Learn more at aka.ms slash fedcyber. That's aka.ms slash fedcyber. And finally, Google's newly designed Bayview Campus, a project aimed at rethinking office space, has encountered significant Wi-Fi issues since its opening in May of 2022. Described by some as the Bermuda Triangle of Broadband due to its complex tent-like metal and glass structure with a unique gradient canopy roof, the design inadvertently hampers Wi-Fi signal propagation. Employees have resorted to using Ethernet cables, phone hotspots, or working outside to circumvent the spotty or non-existent Wi-Fi coverage within the building. Google has acknowledged the problem and is actively seeking solutions, aiming to improve the situation in the coming weeks. 
especially as the company encourages a return-to-office policy. It's an interesting dilemma. Our signals intelligence desk reminds us that RF stands for random failure, and we can't help wondering if architectural firms might find it in their best interest to have an RF engineer give their plans a once-over before submitting them to their clients. And that's The Cyberwire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. You can email us at cyberwire at n2k.com. N2K Strategic Workforce Intelligence optimizes the value of your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your team while making your team smarter. Learn more at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is Trey Hester with original music by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producers are Jennifer Iben and Brandon Karp. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Managing the requirements for modern security programs is increasingly challenging and time-consuming. Enter Vanta. Vanta gives you one place to centralize and scale your security program, quickly assess risk, streamline security reviews, and automate compliance for ISO 27001, SOC 2, and more. You can leverage Vanta's market-leading trust management platform to unify risk management and secure the trust of your customers. Plus, use Vanta AI to save time when completing security questionnaires. CyberWire daily listeners can get $1,000 off by going to vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber. <laughs>